When you think about teams with a bright future in the NBA, it really boils down to three things. Your draft assets that you have at your disposal, your current young core, and each young core player's ceiling and potential, as well as your current star power that you have on your roster. And it's even better when you have young players who haven't hit their primes yet and are already stars in this league. In one of my more recent videos, I discussed five teams that had the bleakest future in the NBA, and I had some people reach out asking to do the opposite of five teams with the brightest future in the league using the same metrics and factors to determine which teams deserve to be in the top five and that's what we'll be going over in this video as always if you're new to the channel and you like this type of content then be sure to subscribe to help the channel grow and in return i'll be providing more nba content like this now this one was actually difficult to do because unlike the handful of teams around the league that have a bleak future who are void of draft picks and or young players there are many, many more teams that have a stockpile of draft picks and up and coming young talent. But what I will say though is just because a team does have what appears to be a bright future on paper, we have seen so many instances of those scenarios in NBA history go wrong and they ultimately never win a championship, whether it be due to major injuries of their young core or players who seemingly looked like they had loads of potential when they first entered the league, but fell by the wayside after just a few seasons. So even for some of these teams that I'm about to go through, while I think they have a lot to look forward to in terms of their future, there is still some work to be done in terms of getting their squad over the hump and winning a championship. I'm going to start with the most obvious, arguably the team with the brightest future in the NBA, the Oklahoma City Thunder. I mean, when you already have a superstar on your team, a player who arguably should have won the MVP last season, a top five player in the NBA in Shea Gilders Alexander, who is in the peak of his prime, having just turned 26, you have Chet Holmgren, who is now going into his second year after a great rookie season, who will only continue to improve with each passing year. They added Isaiah Hartenstein, who is also only 26, and I have always said is a very underrated player in terms of the impact he brings to the court. He's not going to put up eye-popping numbers, but he impacts winning and had the second highest net rating and on-off numbers for the Knicks last season, only behind Jalen Brunson. They also added Alex Caruso, who I know is 30 and becomes their oldest player, but as a Bulls fan who just cannot understate his value and importance, especially on the defensive end of the floor, you are going to love Alex Caruso and what he's going to bring to that team. Jalen Williams, who is also a rising talent that they were able to steal with the 12th pick in the 2022 draft. Hell, they even selected Nikola Topic with the 12th pick in this past draft, a player who will likely miss the whole season due to his ACL injury, but was projected to be the number one pick and the best player from the 2024 draft before his injury. They're the second youngest team in the NBA, only behind the San Antonio Spurs, and yet they still managed to finish with the best record in the Western Conference last season. Yes, they fell short of expectations and losing to the Mavericks in the playoffs, but with time, experience, maturity, and now a more well-rounded roster, they'll be right back into the mix at the top of the standings and competing for a championship. But on top of all of that, the Thunder have a treasure trove of draft picks to work with. They have so many picks, they're not even going to be able to use all of them. And when you have that many picks, they have 33 picks in total, I believe, between first and second rounders, including pick swaps. You're a 57-win team, you already have a superstar, you're one of the youngest teams in the league, and you have all that draft capital that you can use for a blockbuster trade or trades to bring in even more star-level talent. Forget about it, this team is set up for the future better than anyone else. Next on the list, of course, we have to include the San Antonio Spurs, and it's mainly because they have a player that projects to be the best player in the league in maybe five years' time. I mean, I mean, we weren't sure if the hype was real when it came to Victor Wimanyama coming into the league. A lot of people still aren't sure if his frame will hold up in the NBA long term, which that's a fair concern given the history of players his size and how long they've fared into the league. But at 19, this kid was everything we thought he would be, one of the best defenders in the NBA, probably should have won Defensive Player of the Year, but with his fluidity, ball handling, and movement like a guard, he's already one of the best two-way players in the game of basketball. He's already an all-star, even though, yes, I'm aware he wasn't selected as an all-star, but 20 years old, he's only going to continue to get better. A franchise-changing player for the Spurs, they will continue to build around for the future. They also have the youngest team in the league. They have over 30 draft picks to work with, both their own and others that they've acquired in a trade, most notably unprotected picks they have from the Hawks and the DeJounte Murray deal. For the Spurs, though, I wouldn't say their young core is as promising outside of Wimby. Devin Vassell, Kelton Johnson have been nice, but I wouldn't say they're going to be turning into stars in the NBA. So. I'm still really not sure what to make of him, a very up and down player, but regardless, when you have a generational talent and so many draft picks to work with for the future, your future is going to be brighter than most. The next team I have on the list is the Orlando Magic, who have really put together a strong core in Paolo Boncaro, Franz Wagner, and Jalen Suggs, all players below 25 and continuing to get better. They've got their even younger players in Anthony Black, Jet Howard, Caleb Houston, and even their more recent draft pick in Tristan Da Silva. 
I was a little disappointed in the Magic with all the cap space they had going into the summer. They only added Catavius Caldwell Pope, who I think will be a great addition for them. But when they had the money to add a near max level type deal with some of the free agents on the market as well, I would have expected them to make a bigger splash after having one of the best seasons for their team anyway in recent years. But regardless, they still have a talented young core, an already star player that has superstar potential at just the age of 21 in Boncaro. And while they don't have the kind of draft capital the Thunder and the Spurs are sitting on, they still have most of their picks and control pick swaps with other teams that will allow them to build around their current core that they have that's already a playoff team. Next up, I've got the Utah Jazz. Now, I still think the Jazz made a mistake in not moving Lowry Markkinen when his value was at its peak for a player who doesn't really fit their timeline of rebuilding and reportedly was receiving offers in the range of three plus first round picks. Instead, they gave him a max deal, can't be traded all next season, so you're significantly lowering his value for a player who is going to be 28 by the time he is eligible to be traded and is now on a max deal. And a player that is too good for you to really commit to the tank this season and trying to land a top lottery pick in a stack draft class but I digress the reason I have the Jazz as one of my teams with the brightest future is because of how many draft picks they control and the fact that they have multiple unprotected picks they were able to acquire in the Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell trade deals they have 19 first and second round picks to work with between now and 2031 most of those are first round picks whereas the Thunder and the Spurs who have more picks in total a good portion of those are second round picks while the Jazz 15 of their 19 total picks are first rounders I would say the only thing that Jazz don't have going for them as much is with their young talent. Larry Markinen is still an all-star, but when I say young talent, up-and-coming players, and mainly looking at guys below 25, I think they did very well in the draft and snagging Isaiah Collier as a late first rounder with the 29th pick. Collier was the number one recruit coming out of high school with a lot of upside. And I also really like the selection of Cody Williams in number 10, who has two-way potential. Uh, Walker Kessler, Keontae George have been nice for them as well. I think they will be great role players in the NBA, but it's not on the same level of a young core like the Thunder or the Magic. Maybe they can get there though. It just really depends on what kind of progress we see from Collier and Cody Williams. And then finally, and again, this was tough because because I do think some other teams should have been included as well, but that's the Houston Rockets. I just really like their young core. I think even if you determine that Jalen Green and Alfred and Shangun aren't a good fit together, then you're probably gonna be able to get great value for one of them in a trade. I think Amen Thompson is great with a lot of potential, a lot of upside. They landed one of the best shooters in college last season in Reed Shepard that they got with the pick from the Nets as part of the James Harden trade. Don't sleep on Jabari Smith Jr. either. He has a lot of potential. I still think Shangun, despite his injury at the end of the season, is a future future star in this league. Yes, I believe he is a future star in the NBA. Tari Eason, Cam Whitmore, they have a lot of young talent they could work with and build upon for the future. And they have most of their future draft picks and they have quite a few picks coming their way between what's been given to them from Memphis, the Suns, pick swaps from the Nets as well. There's still a lot of things they need to work out to be able to get back to a place to be able to contend again. They don't have any current star players, but in my opinion, they have players with that level of potential. So while I wanted to include a few other teams like the Blazers, who have a lot of young players and draft picks, the Pacers, who have more star power, but aren't as young and don't have as much in their back pocket from a draft asset perspective. I still think those teams have a bright future, but still didn't quite crack the top five that I have here when you consider all of the metrics and factors that I mentioned. But I would love to hear what you guys think. Do you agree or disagree? Let me know in the comments. As always, be sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.